Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here. Now, for those of you who don't already know, but I'm sure most of you do, every single series of Star Trek is now available to view for free on Netflix. This creates quite the conundrum for us as viewers, because there's a lot of it, you know. Um, and today I'm going to answer the question, should you watch Star Trek the Next Generation, so the sort of second spin-off from the original series, well, no, the first spin-off from the original series, um, and in short, my answer is yes, you should definitely watch it, and I say that unequivocally. I don't, it's not like Deep Space Nine or Voyager, where I think you can skip a few or whatever. No, I feel like Star Trek The Next Generation is just great television, and it's an example of great television. There is a reason it ran for seven seasons, and the original series only ran for three. Um, the Next Generation is just unparalleled in terms of how good it is. Um, I, I can't really necessarily describe um, why it's so good? Well, I, I mean, I can. It's it has a lot. Well, for starters, um, you have great actors at the helm. All of these are great actors. Uh, Patrick Stewart. I mean, for goodness sake, he's Patrick Stewart. He's a British treasure. Um, you know, and all the others have you know have gone on to be very iconic. Um, it just it it took all that was good about the original series, kept that, and said, okay, but we're going to modernise it, we're going to, like, improve on the bits, particularly in terms of, uh, in terms of, like, acting, you know, when you've got people like Shatner, you know, in that bit where he's like, I'm losing command, you know, you have Patrick Stewart instead, and he is, you know, the superior actor, and I would say in many ways, it's the superior series, um, there's just huge amounts of variety, um, and it doesn't necessarily fall into the same traps as the original series. Well, no, it's different. I think the original series, you know, having watched a few, I've not watched the whole thing, but often its message is very clearly anti-communist. It's part of that whole Cold War thing, uh, at the time when there was a lot of um, you know, resistance to communism, saying they are the enemy. Star Trek The Next Generation is a lot more nuanced, and it sees things in less black and white terms, and that leads to creating uh, more interesting storylines. Um, you know, you have a plethora of characters, um, all whom are very interesting. Obviously, you have Captain Picard, you have Commander Riker, who starts off, you can see, it, like, when they start off the series, they want him, they basically want him to be a, another Kirk, you know, he's the one who's getting all the women, and he's, you know, he's the clean-shaven American hero, and, and then the series goes on, and he really develops as a character, um, Data is kind of a replacement for Spock, but Brent Spiner's performance has a very intriguing level of charm to it, and I think that's Brent Spiner, I of course loved Leonard Nimoy as Spock, um, but Data is a certainly a unique enough character to be distinct. Um, you know, in fact, there is an episode where the two appear together and even have a scene together, um, and they don't feel like they can can f like they're trying to do the same thing. They are clearly very different characters. Uh, so I don't like to. So I don't like people who say, "Oh, yeah, they're just replacing." you know, all the original series characters with, you know, new flashy ones. No, they're all very distinct and different, you know. Uh, you have Worf, who's quite, um, quite good. Um, you have sort of geeky LeVar Burton as Geordie, he's very good. You have Dr. Crusher, you have, and of course you have, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. If that's how you pronounce it, Whoopi Goldberg. And Will Wheaton. But anyway, and that's just, it, it just feels like it took the base that the original series had established, and TNG then developed on it in every single way. And this is apparent in a lot of ways. So, 
one thing that you get in, and there's a variety of stories. There is a huge variety of stories from massive galact, you know, in interstellar wars going on to, you know, really on the ship. And yeah, okay, you can get kind of formula, but it's very interesting. There are whole varieties. Um, we are introduced with, to a plethora of alien races. We are introduced that really kind of there's a reason that this series was able to be a space for a spin-off for Voyager and Deep Space Nine. It's because it created, it really enriched the Star Trek universe, took it further, you know, and established more things that couldn't be, that Next Generation didn't have time to explore in depth, you know. Deep Space Nine takes the time to explore more in depth um, the Cardassians and the Bajoran and that history, as well as the Klingons, um, which we've got a fair chunk of in the next generation, whilst Voyager takes more time to look into Borg and all that. Um, and of course, we have, you know, return. And so the series features returning uh, aliens such as um, Klingons and Romulans. All who are timefully updated. The Klingons are now the Federation's allies. Uh, and that can be quite interesting. And that has a lot of interesting plot lines. And they just look a lot more modernised. The huge Romulan warships that now confront the Enterprise. And they can kind of... It's very reminiscent actually. A lot of the episodes involving the Romulans. Are very reminiscent and very relevant I think. To modern day politics. Particularly concerning Russia. That's certainly how I see it. Um, uh, I don't think actually at the time they were probably hearkening back to the, those old Cold War mistrusts. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of political metaphor. There's some superb acting, some really powerful episodes. I mean, if I had to name some of my favourite episodes, I would, you know, I'll go through and name a few now. Um, right, Measure of a Man. Uh, this is where uh, Data's rights are qu put into question. Um, it's asked whether he is a sentient being and afforded all those rights, or if he is just a machine and therefore the property of Starfleet, so he would then have to participate in an experiment where he might be killed. Um, and so, I th that's a very good episode. It kind of features a courtroom dynamic, and it's very well done. You have great... Uh, acting by Patrick Stewart and by Jonathan Frakes both really sell the episode as well as Brent Spiner as always uh, another great episode is The Inner Light where Picard li like lives a whole life on this alien planet um, that's very interesting very powerful um, another powerful episode really powerful That it's very sad actually um, Offspring which involves Data's daughter and it has a very sad ending, but it's a very powerful episode. And you know, and then you know, so I'm talking about you know these sort of smaller episodes, but then you get these, and so you know those are good as well. Whereas like with something like Deep Space Nine, the big episodes are all are um, pretty much always the best ones, and the little episodes are, you know, the filler ones, the funny, silly ones which you watch for the character moments. In Next Generation, you get the little. The, the smaller ones, with a smaller scope and scale, are just as good, and in sometimes better than the big two-parters, uh, with a big galactic war going on. Um, best of both worlds, that has to be mentioned, um, where Picard gets captured by the Borg, and is assimilated and all that, and that's a superb episode, obviously. Uh, Redemption is also very good with the Klingon Civil War. Um, and, you know, I, I, I could go on about a variety of so Frame of Mind is fascinating, and Jonathan Frakes acting in that particularly is just supreme. Uh, where he thinks he's going mad, or he's not sure. You really, you really find yourself questioning the nature of reality in that one. Um, so, like I say, there's just a huge variety of episodes, um, and it's a consistently strong series that ran for seven seasons. This is a series that 
people and they and they quit while they were ahead as well. They probably could have gone on for longer. But um this was a series which at first no one thought was going to work. They were like, "Ah, oh, you can't do Star Trek without the original actors. It's not going to work." Yeah. And I think it has been just as successful, if not more successful, than the original series. So, you know, unequivocally, I'm telling you to watch it. And if if I say, you know, are there fillers? Are there f- less good episodes? Yes, there are less good episodes. There are more silly episodes. Uh, there are plenty of. S- there are a few silly episodes in there, um, but there are v- a great many, if not more, superb episodes. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not really fair to say. And in terms of, like, saying whether or not to skip a season, the thing is about Star Trek The Next Generation is most of the stories, for the most part, there are some overarching storylines that do sometimes become relevant and then don't become relevant to the story of an episode. But generally, um, all the stories are self-contained within an episode. So it's a great binge watch as well. Um, you can just leave it running, you know, um, you know, and just be watching it, and, it, yeah, so, all the episodes are these really, s- it means all these episodes are these really snappily written, uh, very effective stories, uh, which is very good. Um, yeah, I mean, if I had to say about, like, if you had to skip series, maybe skip series one and two, but there's still some very, 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 very strong episodes in those, but those are the, those are those two series are where it feels like they're trying to be the original series, but they're failing, like the, the, like the, the women are still wearing the ridiculously short skirts, it's like, no, this is the, tw- this is not the 23rd century, you know, the misogynistic 23rd century, this is the mature and, you know, equal 24th century. Women do not have to wear those ridiculous skirts, okay, like they did in the original series. Um, (laughs) But, I mean, even then, like I say, there's still some really great episodes within those series. Um, So, yeah, my opinion is that you should watch it. Definitely watch it. Uh, and if you really only want to watch the gems, my recommendation is to uh, look for... There's many top ten lists all over the internet. There's a uh, Watch Mojo top ten list. There's a, uh, there's a website called Ex Astris Scientia, uh, which is one of the best Star Trek websites I've ever used. Uh, he's very informative, very well d- well made. And he has done reviews of every single episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, complete with a, you know, out of 10 rating, if you really want to go on that basis. But I just say, watch all of it. Um, uh, Watch all of it anyway. Uh, Just for a bit of background, I was practically raised on Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, I can remember watching it when I was tiny, because my mum was a huge fan, which still is a ridiculously huge fan. Um... But yeah, so I've kind of grown up with that, and I can't imagine my life without it. Star Trek The Next Generation is just so influential, and such a strong series that really resonates with me and my life. Um, so I would, I'm definitely going to tell you to watch it, so go on, go watch it. Why are you still sitting here? I've told you, go watch it. Right, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video, and you better watch Next Generation.